Find the little moments of joy in every day because sometimes that's really all we have these days, you know? Becca, welcome to POVs. I'm so happy you're here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? I'm good. Are you I'm ready excited. for this conversation? I'm a little sweaty, but I'm good. Hey, we're all sweaty. <laughs> we're in New York. Yes. So <laughs> it, it'll be good as the conversation gets a little heated. Exactly. I noticed that in a lot of your content, mm -hmm. all of the things you post always start with POV. So it feels very fitting. That's what I thought when I heard about this. I was like, here. this is perfect. This you is made had for to me. come. Exactly. Exactly. So <laughs> starting off at the top, before we dive in, if you you had to create a video where it was POV, you're on POVs, uh, what would you do? See, that's where we get a little iffy. I don't really do POVs as me. It's like I hide behind these characters, mm. which is fun. But yeah, I do it as me, just like chilling here and talking to you. you I know, make it. some jokes, crack some jokes. Well, we've got to make that TikTok <laughs> at some point. Yes, yes. But I am so excited to dive in a little bit more as to who you are behind all of the characters you play. And every interview here on POVs, we start off with a bit of a controversial question to help us dive in. You ready to go? Yeah, ready. Okay, Becca. Do you think PC culture has ruined comedy? No, I don't, because as we're growing and evolving and changing our worldviews, especially as it reflects with pop culture, I think comedy changes and evolves with it. And mm. so I don't think it ruins comedy, if anything. I think it kind of gets rid of um, some toxic culture that is in comedy and makes people really think more about what they're saying and the effect that it has on people. Cause like you can say anything is comedy, but where do you draw the line? Do you think it's improved comedy? I think it has, yeah. And I think that it's more accessible to a larger group of people and so that everyone can enjoy it. I think that it's helped it if anything, yeah. When you're creating your comedy videos, do you ever have to think twice about what you're saying so not to offend anyone? Sometimes, and I would never say anything in general to offend anyone anyway, that's not who I am. But sometimes when I make a video I have to be aware and think always like well how can this be perceived is someone gonna take this the wrong way is there room for someone to take this joke the wrong way this character the wrong way and so like I'll do it and then sometimes I'll run it by friends um, before I post it and be like, you think this is cool, right? Like, And they'll be like, yeah, of course, what are you saying? And I'm just overthinking it, but I think that's better than not and just kind of putting things out there because I like to be careful. I'm a people pleaser. I want to make sure it's appealing to a lot of people and not hurting anyone or saying anything, you know, disrespectful. Um, yeah. I hear you, I'm a fellow yeah. chronic people pleaser. So it's... do you worry that in 2022, anyone can get offended by anything? Do you feel like it's possible to create something that inherently will not offend anyone? Yeah, um, and I'm lucky. I, you know, I read all of my comments, most of them, and a lot of them are just generally positive. And it seems I'm not hurting anyone's feelings, but there's always a few where someone's offended by something or takes it the wrong way. So yeah, I think it's kind of impossible. You cannot please everybody. Not everyone's gonna find your stuff funny, kind of in the same light. But yeah, one time I posted a video like, pretending to be a veterinarian. Thought it was funny. It was like so many comments, negative comments, and I had to delete my thing. And it kind of made me step back and be like, oh, I didn't even think of that. I thought that it was just funny. I didn't run it by anyone, I just posted it. And so it kind of made me step back and be like, I have to watch what I say. Wow. Yeah. I guess that's something. an important perspective to like listen to how people receive your content. For but sure. That must be overwhelming to feel like you have to then take something down. Yeah, that you worked hard on and that you're proud of too, right. kind of, yeah. And how do you weigh that as a public facing content creator? How do you create content that you think is funny that you wanna create versus what people want to see and are asking of you? It's hard to step back and be like, what makes me happy? rather than what do people want? How do I separate myself from that so I find joy in what I'm doing? So yeah, it's a weird thing to grapple with and like understand yeah. as you go on, but it's something, it's like a learning process and you find out what works for you. you know? For sure. What yeah. do you think that split is for you? Thankfully, a lot of it is what I wanna post. I would say like 80-20, like some days, it's hard because when I was just doing this for fun and I had another job, it was like fully just fun, just all the time and now, with it being a job, it's like 
I'm always constantly, it's hard to separate yourself from that. It's not like you can just clock out. It's like nine o'clock PM, I'm relaxing. And I'm like, well, what am I gonna make tomorrow? Oh, what? I haven't come up with something in a while, I have to do this. So it becomes like an obsessive thought pattern that's really hard to um, deal with. That's so, a lot. Yeah. On top of the fact that you're constantly playing a whole cast of characters. <laughs> right. So how do you also stay sane? You know, does creating this content that is mostly comedic, Yeah. Is it having a negative impact on your mental health? I've always struggled with mental health, but it's gotten so much worse. It's like been on a progressive progressive downfall kind of. And it's hard to find a balance that works for me and to separate myself from that. It's hard to not compare yourself. I mean, you're always on this and it's like your job is this and everyone is on this and this is everything. And it's hard to separate yourself, not be constantly comparing to other creators, their progress, you know? So it's really, it's it's difficult and challenging. Yeah, yeah it's a lot. Yeah. I totally hear that. Do you feel like your followers and the people who live and breathe your content know the real Becca? No, I don't think so. And that's something I'm always, it's always in the back of my mind, like I should make videos as me, mm. day in my life, you know, vlog type of things. But then I step back and I'm like, I don't have any problem with that being private. What I do on my TikTok feels so separate than my life. Yeah, maybe my followers don't know the extent of me, but I, I just personally don't think it would work for me and my mental health. Yeah, it doesn't sound like that's something you want right. to do. Right. Was that intentional? Or do you think you're realizing that now that you haven't shared a lot of your personal self online? I'm kind of realizing that now as time goes on, I'm like, wait a second, what do my followers actually know about me. I have a million something followers and they signed up for my comedy videos, my characters, what I do on there. So not necessarily, it's like people are like, where are you? Where's the real Becca? Show her, show us her, you know? So I'm like, it's okay, I take comfort in that. And I'm like, they're here for a reason. They wanna see, you know, funny videos that'll make them laugh. And so I just focus on that instead of being like, I should do this, I should be me, you know? Totally. Yeah. When people meet you in person, do they expect you to be like the characters in your videos? They don't expect me to be the characters, but I think they are so into the characters that I do, but it's cool. It's awesome. really nice. What do you wish people knew about the real Becca? I struggle a lot with mental health, like I was saying, and that's not necessarily something that I want to share, but I wish they knew like kind of the extent of how much that affects my days. So like, yeah, it looks like I can make content a few times a week, but sometimes it's really a struggle to um, get up in the morning and do that. And I don't really share that struggle often. Um, and can I ask why? I don't know. I just, I get so caught up in being so closed off and private. Like a lot of the times it's hard for me to even come to terms with what I'm feeling myself. And so it feels kind of like I'd be doing myself a disservice like to my own mental health to just like put that out there for everyone and for anyone to say anything they want about it because you can't control, you know, people's opinions about you or what they say online, so. Yeah, I totally respect that. Yeah. In your real life outside of the comedy, yeah. do you feel like you're able to have these important conversations about the things you're struggling with and mental health? Luckily I am. Good. I have great friends and family and a support system um, that you know is always there for me and who I feel like I can always use as an outlet to talk about all these things with. So it's not like I'm like going through this in my head all by myself and Good. just, so it's nice. Yeah, Good. I'm lucky. And in some of those tougher moments when you are struggling with your mental health, how have you been able to pull yourself out? In college, we didn't really have, I didn't have those conversations with who, you know, who I surrounded myself with. And I just thought that it was like normal, something I was going through being stressed. As I went through college and kind of learned about myself and what I struggle with and my mind and how it works, I kind of just learned what's good for me. I know like as cliche as it sounds, like exercise and like my diet is, like a non-negotiable type of thing. And I do that just for my mental health. So like been like experimenting with what works for me in that sense and like different outlets. Like honestly, TikTok has really helped as a creative outlet for that um, because it's a time that I can just kind of not be me for a little bit and it brings joy to so many people. So that's actually helped to my, my mental health. As much as it has also been a challenge, it's helped it in that way too. I hear you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I think everyone has different strategies or different ways that we pull ourselves out of those moments. Yeah, of course. I noticed that you said you like to create comedy because you actually escape mm -hmm. from a version of yourself. Is that something that stems from a personal experience you had? Do you feel the need to kind of separate 
yourself into maybe even a different type of character for you? So my whole life I've done theater. Um, I am a theater, theater kid at heart. Yeah, I've always done that. And that has always been an outlet for me where like no matter what role I was playing, what musical, what play, it was always like when you're on stage, you escape you for a little bit and you leave that in the audience and you're this new persona, you know? As time goes on and I kind of like adjust that to what that means in comedy for me and content creating, it's helped a lot. Um, it's always been something that was like, oh, this is so nice. Like I don't have to think about any stresses I'm going through, any struggles, anything. I can just be someone else. What I love so much about the content you create is even though it's comedy, you're still pushing important conversations mm -hmm. that I feel need to be had. So for you, are you ever underlining some of your videos with subtle, important, real messages? And if so, what are some of those conversations that you feel stand out? I think in particular, my videos, I do like a whole doctor series where I play like different doctors. And it's like, it's funny because all the comments, it's like, you don't realize how universal these experiences are when you go to the gynecologist, when you go to the dentist, and especially when you go to your psychiatrist or your therapist. I don't know if it was intentional, but it did start conversations in the comments, especially with young people. In the mental health field, it's such a common experience for people to feel like they're not being heard, especially by, someone who's giving them medication and antidepressants. And um, they can, as, as in my experience, they can be dismissive. To read the comments was like, wow, we all are going through the same thing. And I didn't, I wasn't really intentional with starting a conversation about that, but I'm glad that it did. That's awesome. I think comedy is so universal. Mm -hmm. We see ourselves in it. And I know so many people see themselves in the content that you create. Yeah. Are there any important conversations mm -hmm. that you hope to initiate through your comedy that you haven't spoken up about? I always love to start dialogue about therapy. And that's something that I really love about Gen Z, how destigmatized mental health has become. It's like weird if you don't go to therapy, you know? You're like, wait, is something wrong with you? You're not going to therapy? Totally. You're not? And I mean, I don't know, maybe that's a sad thing that we have to be in therapy, but I think it's nice that we've come to terms with like, Mental health is mental health and we all struggle with things and it's okay to talk about it. I just love when people feel safe in my comments and from my content to like talk about those things. That's like the most rewarding part. What is something that you've learned through your own mental health journey that you wish you knew back then in some of those darker moments? For a while, it was like every negative thought that I was having and like, you know, as you go through therapy and I do like, um, cognitive behavioral therapy, you learn about like these cognitive distortions in your head that, you know, dictate your day and your relationships and how you go about your day. And I wish that I knew it's not who you actually are. Mm -hmm. And they're just thoughts. You can separate yourself from those thoughts and actually live like a happy life besides those thoughts. And I know it takes a lot of practice and therapy to actually practice that, but um, I think I wish I, I knew that because I thought it was like end all be all, I'm like this and this is how life is. I was kind of living life through a very negative lens. Yeah. That's such an important reminder that we are not our thoughts, but we're also more than our thoughts. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for, for bringing that up. Becca, I'm so excited to bring us to the part on POVs where we bring in some alternative viewpoints from the larger Gen Z community. Cool. So keep an eye on your phone. We're going to send you some texts and you're going to read them out loud and react so we can hear your POV. Love it. Let's do it. TikTok is for young people. Anyone over 25 needs to go back to MySpace. <laughs> That's a throwback. That hurts. <laughs> that hurts because I'm about to be over 25s and I never had a MySpace. Disagree. And only because, not only, but I have so many um, family members and friends over 25 who tell me that they learn new things from TikTok all the time. And if anything, it's like, don't you want older people to hear younger people's perspective, POVs? There we if, go. If you will. Um, yeah, so I disagree. Strong disagree. I respect mm. that. Do you feel that some of the content you create is a cathartic release from the social family dynamics that you grew up with? Ooh, Ooh. good question. What are the, the dynamics you grew up with? <sighs> um, a lot of it is a cathartic release. I mean, I play um, my Long Island mother and it's not really a release as much as it is a throwback to how I was raised and how it was in my house. Mm -hmm. Um, I grew up, my mom was Jewish. My dad was Catholic. Identity wise, I struggled a little bit. Um, so I do love to be like 
older Jewish women and like all the people commenting like, yes, this is like my Jewish mother. I'm like, yes, I love that because I wasn't ashamed of it growing up, but I was one of very few Jewish people in my school and we're all half. So it was something that I didn't really um, feel proud telling people that I am. But now like through my content and this, I feel proud to say that I'm Jewish, yeah. That's awesome. Why not? I'm Jewish. Yeah. I'm proud to be Jewish. Good. So it's you should. <laughs> amazing that you feel that way too. The happiest people online are the saddest people IRL. What do you think? Yes. It's true. I really do think it's true. And that's why I try not to uh, post all the time like glitter and rainbows from my life because I feel like that would be a little bit of a lie. Um, and you know, it's hard not to compare yourself to people, be like, look how happy she is and where she is and where they got, you know. Do you feel like comedy is a coping mechanism? I do. I really do. It's always been my coping mechanism. Like making people laugh kind of takes you out of yourself for a little bit. I'm always like the clown in the room, have to have the last laugh, have to be the funniest type of thing. And that's always been... I think something to cover up, yeah. Interesting, I've always yeah. wondered if, you know, utilizing comedy is almost helping you compensate for mm. something. People who do impressions are inherently offensive. Disagree on the inherently part, but I think it depends on who you are impersonating. So like, I've never do an impression of a person of color. I would never, you know, step out of bounds in that way because I think that's disrespectful and I think there's a time and place for impressions. My impressions are characters that I do of myself. I'm not really doing any like celebrity or like actual people who exist. I think once you get into that realm, it can get a little sticky. Do you feel like all the characters that you play also relate to personal experiences you've had? Yeah, and I think the cool part about the content I post is so many people have those experiences. It's like, I like doing like people you see in your everyday life, like the pizza guy when you're drunk at 3 a.m. at the pizza shop, like, you know, um, a person working at like Target, like those types of things that you come across every day, I find uh, does well. Mm. Becca, drop a hot take, fire emoji, fire emoji, fire emoji. Hmm. I feel like you have some great ones. Privacy is more important than vulnerability. It's hard, I'm like in my mind, I'm like, did you really mean to say that? But I did because there's like this expectation when you're like an online personality or someone who posts content and put themselves out there that you should be vulnerable and share every part of yourself and I disagree. That's a lot of what we talked about today. Yeah. And I think you've really taught me that you don't have to share every piece of yourself in order to actually go through the things you're struggling with. And I think you're yeah. right, people in the public eye feel that extra pressure. Yes, exactly. Did you ever have a moment or something you can pinpoint where you felt obligated or you were about to share something about your life and then you realized, hey, I actually, I don't need to share that. I don't know a specific thing, but sometimes if I'm having like a hard day, I'm like, you know what, maybe I'll, I'll post about this or even just being like a Q and A on your Instagram. I'm like, I just want, I have like an hour of free time. I would rather just kind of read or write or like be away from my phone. I don't have to connect right now. Like sometimes you lose the connection with your own self. So in those moments, I'm like, take a step back. You don't have to be there always. Um, you don't have any type of responsibility for that. So I just have to remind myself that often. Whew, that was a reminder that I know I needed to. <laughs> yeah. What's your secret? How do you actually detach yourself from the crazy world of social media? I wish I knew because it's very hard. I'm like doom scrolling all the time Same. on TikTok. You're any free moment you get, it's hard. Setting timers helps me a lot to be like, here, you have 60 minutes where you can't touch your phone. And like having that actually helps because I used to do the thing where like you can put timers on your apps and then you just are like, hey, remind me later. Eh, it's okay. When I put on my to-do list, I'm like someone who has to check off my to-do list, like mm. self-care, then I have to do it. And that actually helps a lot, making that a priority. That's huge. Yeah. I'm gonna try setting some try timers, <laughs> some time blocks instead of the, the social the media thing. reminders. because. Yeah. I always no, click remind useless. me later. Useless. Thank you for sharing that, Becca, and for being so vulnerable today. I know you just said that privacy is more important than vulnerability, but I would argue today, thank you so much for actually flipping the script because I think sharing your story and the real Becca behind the comedy and the characters is really so important for people to hear. And I just really admire you and oh, everything you create. You. So I have one question for you before you go. POV is, is really a platform for Gen Z to come together so we can unify. If you could share one message with our entire generation that you think would 
help bring us a little bit closer back together, what would you want them to know? Don't take yourself so seriously. It's hard to get caught up in um, the negativity of the world every day and in the news, but yourself, that's like something that's sacred and for you. And it's hard to not let that negative news like affect your whole being because it is what we're going through right now. Find the little moments of joy in every day because sometimes that's really all we have these days, you know? So find those moments instead. Yeah, we got to hold on to those. Yeah. And I will say, I think Gen Z does an incredible job of leading with humor. Yes. I think we satirize most things we and do. it's refreshing, it helps. <laughs> but I think it's easy to get caught in that trap of taking Absolutely. yourself too seriously. So thank you for that reminder. Thank you for coming on the show, thank Becca, you you're amazing. Me. And I can't wait to keep these conversations going. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, bring it in. Yeah. It was so fun. So fun. What'd you think? So fun. You were such a natural. Really? I'm yeah. dripping. Are you kidding? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sweating. You can't even tell. Really? Yeah. No, I loved it. That's fine. But you're new. But you're so easy to talk to. So it's like, it makes it like, hey. we're, forget where you are. So you know? are you. Thank you. Truly. I'm so happy you came today. Me too. Back. Before you go, can we take a selfie? Yes. Duh. Okay. Okay. Ready?